Hey folks, it's uh, mid-January here, uh, 2021 here in Nashville. Uh, middle of winter, very chilly, but uh, today was a nice sunny day. So I thought I'd give everybody an update on what I've been working on uh, over the Christmas break and over the winter so far. Uh, I found a, a bargain Harbor Freight trailer, the 40 by 48 model, and uh, converted that into my kayak trailer. Uh, have a truck but uh, figured out that it was really too tough to, to haul all the gear and everything that goes in the kayak and then still load the kayak in the back with it hanging out the back. It just wasn't a very secure option for me. So real quick, I'll give you a walk around. Uh, obviously, this is the driver's side. Uh, first thing you'll notice is the DIY rod tube I made with an 8-foot section of PVC pipe 6 inches wide. I used the Reese Conduit Carrier. Um, there's a YouTube video by Fluke Master where he paints it with Flex Seal, and that's what I did as well. Um, seems to be okay. Uh, the temperature is a little cold, so I'm not sure how well it's going to stick. Uh, I've got some touch-up paint for every little nick and scratch that I can put back on there, but for now it seems to be doing okay. Uh, I did paint the front of the tube black uh, up near the, the car, um, and we'll put some reflective stickers on it as well. Uh, obviously, I have my 2020 Native Slayer Propel uh, strapped to the top. And uh, works out really well with the three ratchet straps. I'm sorry, not ratchet straps, cam straps. I don't use ratchet straps uh, per, you know, trying not to damage the kayak. Um, on the top, you'll notice uh, here up close, uh, I made a mount uh, for the kayak. The native kayaks are really tough to use PVC pipe or any other kind of bunk boards. Uh, and so what I did... Again, credit to another YouTuber. Uh, his name is Kayak Plains Drifter. Uh, he made it on a metal trailer for his. Uh, but what it does is it utilizes actually four uh, plastic decking boards. And they're mounted on a 2x6 piece that is slotted for the keel and the rudder and everything to slide up. Uh, and then they're slanted a little bit to, to make sure that there's maximum surface contact. And with those being plastic, they work out really well. It just slides right across it, doesn't do any damage to the bottom of the kayak, uh, and seems to, to hold it and support it pretty well. It's got a little bit of flex too. Um, I went ahead and countersunk uh, the lag screws that are holding it in place, uh, so it should work out pretty well. And then uh, the wooden base that I made is actually bolted to the lid of the, the gear part of the trailer. Um, moving around the back, I rewired everything. I stripped the whole thing down. Uh, it was in pretty bad shape. Uh, I bought new hubs and tires and wheels off of eTrailer.com. Highly recommend them. They're a great company. Uh, ship really quickly. So I took the, the original tires that were on it, ordered a mount off of Amazon and mounted it to the back here, painted the rims black, uh, and then used locking lug nuts uh, to keep honest people honest. Uh, but what this does with it being mounted back here, the first one, it actually gives me a mounting point to where I can put the nose of the kayak up on it uh, to get it started to lift it up onto the uh, top of the trailer as I move it forward. You know, obviously I've got the native sidekick landing gear, uh, and so uh, it's on wheels. So once you get the front up and balanced, and then you can reposition your grip and just lift it up on there fairly easily. Uh, redid the wiring for the lights, added LED lights. Um, it worked out pretty good. Uh, I did want to go ahead and get the extra mounting brackets. I ordered those off of Amazon to help protect the lights with loading the kayak from the rear most of the time. Um, I built the box. Uh, it's 30 inches tall. I did that on purpose. It's a little taller than what I originally thought, but I can actually stack two uh, full size totes, uh, with locking lids on there and still be able to close the lid. Um, so it, it works out pretty well. Uh, I did all of the, um, the mounting, uh, and then the door to the gear part of the trailer on the passenger side or on the ditch side, I guess is the another way to put it that way. Uh, if I ever have any problems on the side of the road, I'm at least not hanging out there uh, in traffic and gives me a little bit extra time. So uh, it's a little inconvenient to walk around the car, uh, but at the same time, it is a little bit better for safety. Um, one thing I did, I used the trailer uh, had brackets to uh, mount two by fours uh, or actually uh, 
uh, one by one by fours. Uh, and so what I did was uh, I mounted them, bolted them to the trailer frame. And then on the inside, when I open it up, I'll show you, I also have another one by four sandwiching the plywood uh, that I used to build the box with. So it's supported on both the inside and the outside all the way up to the to the uh, to the lid since it's supporting quite a bit of weight with the kayak and, and the gear sitting on top. Uh, coming around the front, I added uh, a tongue box. I believe it's called a DZ tongue box um, off of Amazon. Um, seems to work out pretty well. What I do with it, uh, I actually store the sidekick uh, legs in it because they're going to be pretty dirty and sandy and everything. I don't want those getting a bunch of crap all over my fishing gear. Uh, and then uh, extra straps uh, and uh, extension for the tow hitch and things like that. Uh, that's locking as well. Um, one thing I did was I did a lot of research on security and figured out that uh, trailer thieves are very prevalent and very adept at what they do. So I tried to make it as um, uninviting as possible. All of the tie downs and everything uh, is either bolted with a lock nut on the backside or uh, if you'll see here, uh, some of these are actually, uh, there's no bolt there. It's, uh, I can't remember what the name of those things are, but they sit flush. And, and so you can't actually even get a tool on it to open anything up. Um, use locking lug nuts on the wheels. Uh, I do have a, a tire chain that goes through the, the spoke of the, the wheel and goes through the leaf spring and then has a really heavy duty padlock uh, that'll keep it from being stolen. Um, I have a hitch lock and also uh, padlocks all over the trailer. Um, I'm trying to use some combination padlocks that are all, all done the same to where it's easy to get in and out. And if I lose a key or happen to drop my keys, uh, I can still get in the trailer and access everything I need to. Um, the other thing I did was I added a couple uh, secure places here on the front and have a chain running through the scupper holes of the kayak. Uh, and then it padlocks either to the lid uh, if I'm planning on opening the box or if I'm traveling, uh, I can actually do it down further and it just gives an extra security point for the kayak too. So um, added a wheel jack and another spare tire carrier there on the front uh, and then a handle to the hitch uh, tongue to allow it to be fairly easy to maneuver. Now, the one thing uh, that I really uh, did a lot of research on, uh, and there's a couple YouTube videos out there, uh, MSM Kayaking uh, is a guy who puts his kayak on top of a box with his gear. His door is open uh, on the back and open down. They don't top hinge like mine does. Uh, but there's another gentleman that has a Hobie PA-14 and a metal trailer uh, with a locking lid. And I got the idea to do this, and I'll show it here in just a second. You can see uh, the lid to the gearbox actually is hinged, and I used some heavy-duty gas struts. Uh, I think they're 70 pound struts. I need to adjust them a little bit because when uh, with the weight of the lid of the kayak and the mounting brackets and everything and then the kayak itself, it doesn't hold it up. It's really easy to lift. I can lift it up one handed, but I do need to put a support piece in there to keep it up while I'm getting the gear in and out. Uh, but it uh, works great because uh, that way I can load up uh, and unload and then keep the kayak on there and just leave it in the garage. But uh, you'll see it's, it's a pretty good size setup I can do. Uh, uh, the cooler, the full-size seat sitting up, uh, my Flambeau Tough Crate, life jacket, paddles, uh, the pedal drive, everything fits in here great. Uh, there's still room for, for some more gear, which I'm sure my wife is going to be lovely that I can uh, add more crap into this and, and buy more stuff. But uh, I did leave some space for expansion. So anyways, uh, that's about it. Uh, if you guys have any questions, feel free to message me in the um comment section obviously like it if you want to and and feel free to subscribe i do have a couple other diy projects that i'll review uh making a battery box and then doing a light install uh for the the kayak with the the yak power and the yak power lights uh, i did do a diy battery box and and uh, we'll show that in the next video coming up here but anyways thanks for your time i uh, hope it helps you guys as you're uh looking to to do stuff for your fishing and kayak setups I, i'll be honest with you the youtube community uh, community has been huge for me and my uh my stuff as i've done my projects going forward i'm always out there researching and watching that uh to see what everybody else is doing so uh take care thank you